about this next topic um, because it is more than just cannabis, you know. Um, cannabinoid therapeutics is much more than cannabis because everything that we do or don't do in our lives affects how the endocannabinoid system works. So really excited to have Dr. Deborah Matthias is a nurse practitioner at Gentiva Hospice. She has also previously worked and tenured and certified nurse educator. She has over eight years of experience in hospice, bedside nursing, and administration. Her areas of interest for both teaching and nursing practice include hospice, gerontology, mental health, health assessment, and senior practicum. She has been an ACNA member for more than five years and has served on the education committee. She holds a certificate in medical cannabis from Pacific College. She's a member of Sigma Theta Tau International Nursing Honor Society and has served on the board of directors and is chair of the membership involvement committee. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that because you saw yesterday, I can't stand still. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I gotta be out here. Um, this was actually a capstone project that I did when I was at Pacific College for the cannabis care certificate. And um, when I created this poster, I was working um, very heavily actually with an interdisciplinary committee at the university. And so that's what inspired me to go this way with it because, you know, we still run into a lot of um, negative bias about cannabis. And in the universities, <clears throat> I mean, even as recently as a couple of years ago, I was being told, well, you know, it's federally illegal and we get a lot of federal dollars. And I'm like, yeah, they don't have anything to do with each other, but what do I know? Anyway, um, so when I, when I put this together, I was really cognizant of the idea that as nurses, we're looking at, we have this, the hub of the wheel, which is the patient. And then all of the different disciplines that are part of the interdisciplinary group. And then the nurse is the rim of that wheel that holds it all together, right? So the patient's the center. And we're looking at all of the different disciplines that work with our patients. But if they don't, if all those different disciplines don't understand the endocannabinoid system, then they have no idea the power in their hands or at their potential to help our patients. So as nurses, we can really educate the rest of the interdisciplinary team. So that's what I had in mind. And I did present this actually to the interdisciplinary education group at the university. Um, so one of the first things I, I point out, and you can't see it because of this particular setup, but um, I mentioned that we now know that the endocannabinoid system is actually the master regulator of homeostasis in the human body. And because of that, we need to be looking at how every single body system is governed by that ECS. So, I wanted to, to oh, I always have to read this because I forget it. Um, okay, so the endocannabinoid system was discovered in 1992, and we do know that it's responsible for homeostasis, and this is why I forget it because there's so many. We have active endocannabinoid receptors in the brain, the skin, the gut, the adipose tissue, I got lots, and even the mitochondria. So that tells you really how active it is in our bodies. And the great thing about it is that in order to activate our own endocannabinoid system and, and elevate our own health, we don't act, actually need to take phytocannabinoids. I mean, most of us probably do, but you know, here, this is something sort of non-controversial. Okay, so we're gonna start with the nutrition expert. So if you know, if your team has a nutritionist or even someone who's in dietary, you can talk about how that professional can upregulate the patient's endocannabinoid system with diet. In this particular part of the infographic, I have mentioned um, uh, seeds, nuts, eggs, chocolate, herbs, um, that kind of thing. But there's also another diet called G-Bombs. Greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds. If we emphasize those items in the diet, then we are helping our patients upregulate their ECS. Conversely, if people are exposed to a lot of plastic, 
and alcohol, those are two things that downregulate the endocannabinoid system. And so if you were, if you were counseling people nutrition-wise, this is what you would be telling them. For exercise, it's important that people move. We know that when we move, our brains make anandamide, which protects the brain. Okay, so, but one of the important things about it is that it has to be movement that you enjoy. So for example, my brother who's in the army was arguing this with me, and he said, I don't like PT, and I don't think anybody likes PT, and nobody wants to get up in the morning and run all this. And I said, okay, well, maybe that's true. But for our patients and for what we nurses need to teach the, the sports and physical science people is that, that enjoyable activity. So swimming, walking, dancing, playing golf, without the cart. Whatever it is that people do that they enjoy doing is helping their brains because they're making an anandamide. It's upregulating their endocannabinoid system. So if you work with social workers, then you can talk about quality time. Quality time can be enjoyable relationships. It can be having friend groups. It can be book club. It can be whatever it is that gives you a supportive environment. Those things upregulate your ECS. If, however, um, you are involved in negative relationships, those are stressful. And stressful relationships downregulate the ECS. So that is something that the social work professional could work with their patients on. And then we'll move to calm, engaging activities, such as yoga, meditation, prayer, deep breathing. Um, these all support the endocannabinoid system. You've been hearing about this all weekend. <laughs> and so um, the mental health professionals can really help patients understand the, like, you know, I have heard so many people, because I used to teach mental health, who would downplay the idea of any kind of meditation. But they, if you say it in a different way, you know, there's self-reflection, there's prayer, there's go outside and enjoy the, the beauty of the earth. You can, you can encourage meditation without calling it that. And so that would be your mental health. And then this one, massage, is talking about massage, acupuncture, dietary supplements, stress management, these are all considered, quote, alternative forms of healthcare. I really prefer to think of it as integrative because I think that there's a place for allopathic care or what we call mainstream healthcare. I think there's a place for that, but I think there's an equal, if not greater place for the alternative therapies that come from the earth and come naturally to us. And that would be the endocannabinoid system. So also, under the calm and under the alternative, do keep in mind that things like music therapy, pet therapy, all, whatever it is that brings calm and centering is elevating the ECS. And then this final little box here is talking about how we do have a relatively recent development where we understand a, an endocannabinoid deficiency. Somehow there's a deficiency in that system where our own bodies can't regulate and we know that that person is gonna have a harder time maintaining health. And so if the whole team comes together and the whole team understands the importance of the endocannabinoid system, then as a team, we are helping that patient elevate their endocannabinoid system and achieve higher levels of health. And so that's what the poster is about is everybody on the team, but the nurses providing that guidance to those healthcare professionals who don't yet know the things that we know. And that's it.